Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great, great evening. hope all your taco dreams are coming true. And um, I found out why I had that hissing sound. It's actually this cable right here. I got so many daggone cables and stuff. I feel like old Mother Hubbard, you know, who lives in a shoe had so many cables i didn't know what to do so i'm gonna have to take that one out of here and change it up and uh then we should be able to get rid of that hissing sound you know this is literally a labor of love here in joe boo's man cave where i am not just the client i am the everything guy here um yeah everything that goes on here it's all me so i was sitting here coming up the road because when i drive i do a lot of thinking and um there's a lot of things that happen and you believe that it's the right thing but you don't necessarily have the numbers to back up what you believe and so i was talking to brother Roz. shout out to brother Roz, who is an analyst okay see you know he he that's what he does for a living he loves numbers and breaking them down and stuff and you know so we have our first victory which is great and Cooper Rush, oh my God, Cooper Rush, man, Cooper Rush, he made Dak Prescott look like garbage. He was so good. You know, the offense really responded to him. Everything seemed to be great and all that. And I kept looking at this and saying, we didn't coach the same way. We didn't call the game the same way. And I didn't have any numbers to back this up or anything. But I remember Saturday before, we played Tampa, Tampa Bay. And I remember saying how the Cowboys can get a win against Tampa Bay. I said, first of all, I said, you've got a young offensive line. You got Tyler Smith playing his first game. Tyler Smith is a better run blocker than he is pass blocker. And I said, if we go out and we establish the run and use 12 personnel, that that's going to make it advantageous to get the ball going, to get some confidence going. And if we're able to run the football and using the 12 personnel, we can start RPOs, you know, um, play action, bootlegs, and things like that, which will help because we have eight men in the box get one-on-one -on -one coverage. And we didn't do that. Now, I didn't have time to look at the numbers and things like that. Earlier today, um, the reason why I'm actually doing this now is earlier today, um, Brother Roz sent me a text and said that the Cowboys used 12 personnel and 21 personnel. 12 personnel being the first number is the number of running backs, the second number is the number of tight ends. So when you say 12 personnel, it's one tight end, two, I'm sorry, one running back, two tight ends. When you say 21 personnel, that's two running backs and one tight end. If you were to say 22 personnel, it'd be two running backs and two tight ends. And I don't know how many times they actually did that set or not. But going through and watching the game, the Cowboys sling the ball. They threw the ball crazy. And that to me was not the recipe to win. Now, now I want you to listen to this now for a second. So the Cowboys had 69 plays against Tampa Bay. 69. Only 16 were runs. They had 16 runs in that game, which is 23% of the game. The rest of the time, they slung the pass. I mean, so you're talking about 77% of the time, they threw the football. I said, it's not the recipe to win. You need to be closer to balance. You need to stop allowing teams to be able to figure out your one-dimensional. And we had uh, the player from Tampa Bay basically said, we knew they weren't going to run, and that's why we could cover people. And when we started doing things like two-man routes, you got seven D-backs back there covering two guys. You didn't have an advantage. And I know Dak was off that game. The receivers couldn't get separation. Um, we were actually running the football with Zeke 5.2 yards, but we abandoned that. Uh, Tony Pollard didn't get much out of there. And I want to put one other thing out here that we didn't do. Jake, not from State Farm, Jake Ferguson. 
Of those 69 plays, shout out to Brother Ross, who did the research for me. 11 plays were how many Jake Ferguson was in. 16% of the time. Now, Dalton Schultz played all the plays. So that means that 16% of the time was how much we did 12 personnel. Right? Because you have to have two tight ends in to play 12 personnel. So you had Jake Ferguson in for 11 plays. Go now to Cooper Rush, who looked better than Dak. He looked great. The offense looked great. But check this out. Check this out. By the numbers. And I know what's going to happen is some of you guys are going to say, well, it, de- it doesn't pass the eye test. Dak sucks. Well, you have to understand that you have to have, you know, some advantages. You can't have all disadvantages going against you. So we ran 69 plays against Tampa Bay. 16 runs. We ran 61 plays this past week against Cincinnati. But we ran 25 running plays. 40% of the time, we ran the football. Huh. 23% against Tampa Bay. 40% against Cincinnati. Hmm. Interesting. Here's the thing. We ended up with 60 yards running the football against um, Tampa Bay. We had 107 yards running against Cincinnati. One more thing to put in here. So, the game plan was different. 60-40 split, pass and run. Dak, 77-23. Interesting thing here. Of the 61 plays... Jake Ferguson was in 34 of them. Now, I can't tell you unless I go through each of the plays individually. Dalton Schultz only played 55 of the 61. So there were six plays he missed, uh, probably because of the knee injury. So worst case, worst case here is that uh, six plays Jake Ferguson wasn't in on with Dalton Schultz. That's the worst case, which would be 28 plays that he was in there with Dalton Schultz. Okay. If he was in 34 plays with Dalton Schultz, it's 55% of the time we ran 12 personnel. Hmm. If it's, if he ended up playing when Dalton Schultz was out, then it's still 47% of the time, which is still a 31, a 31 to 44% difference. I'm sorry, 31, 31 versus 39% of the time increase of using 12 personnel. 12 personnel having two tight ends, multiple looks. Let me go through the numbers a little bit more here. Actually, I don't actually I don't have too many more numbers here. But here's the difference. You had actually less passes to Noah Brown, but he had about 34 more yards. He had more catches. Jake Ferguson was only targeted. I don't think he was targeted at all in those, at least not yet. And they were going to end up having a different look because Dalton Schultz may be out this week. But because they were in the 12 personnel, because they were running that football, Cincinnati had to cover the running plays more, in which case they had to be concerned. They they couldn't be as concerned about the receivers. Balanced offense. You got eight men in the box. Eight men in the box. You got more one-on-one cover for Noah Brown and CeeDee Lamb. See, that is actually play calling that you want to have done you want to have balance you don't want to be passing the ball 77 percent of the time you want to run the football and pass the football you want to play action you want to rpo you want to do all of these things but once you become one-dimensional 
You're relying too much on the arm, and the defense knows you're, <coughs> excuse me, you're passing the football all the time, which means we're going to be in nickel coverage all the time. 12 personnel, you can do both. You can do both. And so that, my friends, when Dak gets back, and Jerry Jones was saying, <laughs> I don't know that anybody knows when he'll be back, but when he's back, when he gets a good strength in his hand, uh, then you'll probably see some real advancement in his timeline. I don't know when that is, but I don't, but I do know that with good Aaron out like last week, everybody recognizes he'll be back sooner. Then later, uh, as far as the timeline, it really could be a minimum of two weeks up in here in my mind, Washington in week four. Now, that's op very optimistic, but he's got that kind of repair that uh, will allow him not to have a lot of fear of re-injuring it. It's just a question of the grip. <laughs> I want me some glory holes. <laughs> I'm sorry. He didn't put that part on there. He did before. So. When Dak comes back, we can't be that sling the rock 50 times a game. It's not a recipe for winning. I know Kellen Moore loves to sling the rock, but you need to run the football. You need to be balanced. This was a totally different game plan than what they did week one. This is a great game plan using the 12 personnel, using the whole field using better spacing and, and screen plays. And I hope in the future, this is the kind of game plan that we do. Now, we saw Mike McCarthy on the sidelines with the playbook. I mean, with the, the play sheet. We don't know if he was calling plays, if he was telling Kellen, put that shit down. We're not running that, Kellen. Pick another one or what. But this was definitely different than the week before. All right, good people. I hope you're having a great taco night. And uh, I'm going to get ready to get my behind out of here. And we'll see what we're going to see. And I'm going to let Vado finish this off. Oh, I don't have the right speaker on. Didn't have the right speaker on, but he said F the Eagles.